Hi guys, just relaxing here on the sofa, it's peaceful, um, everyone's gone out, or nearly everyone's gone out, nice and quiet, so I thought I'd cut a video, say hi to you guys, just encourage you in the Lord, um, I'm excited and I hope you are too, that we are so close to the rapture, that uh, the infamous peace deal has now uh, gone out and has been put across to the Palestinian people and that we're just waiting for that peace deal to be confirmed. You are alive during that time and you should find that encouraging and you should find that exciting. I mean, I certainly do. Just to say that I am alive in that time when the peace deal has gone out. It's kind of like, well, mate, well, I'll leave this up to you, but it is, it's, for me, it's kind of like saying, I was alive to see Jesus the major when he was born, you know? It's just that kind of thing, you know? I'm alive during this time when that peace deal, yeah, that, that, that one that was mentioned in scripture has gone out, you know? So yeah, I'm excited about that. Um, I am a bit, uh, also just wanted to bring up this other topic, and that is these Christians that are trying to scare everyone that you're not going to go in the rapture because look at your works, you know, it's kind of like your works determine whether you go in your rapture, you know, unless you repent, you're not going to go into the rapture, you know, kind of thing, I hope you repent every day, you sinful person, I, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not buying into that uh, at all. Okay, if you've given your life to Jesus, you're going up in the rapture, and it's as simple as that. Okay, we are saved through grace. The, pro the problem is people don't rightly divide the word. Sometimes scripture is written to the Gentiles, sometimes it's written to the church, sometimes even it's written to the people who are left behind. Because what happens is we're living in a period of grace now, specifically aimed at the Gentiles, or the church, which is us. But after the rapture, God's going to focus back on Israel. And yeah, there might be some other Gentiles that might be incorporated into that. But then it gets turned back into very much works-based thing. So when you're reading scripture and it sounds like it's work-based, do you think maybe God could be speaking to those people who are left behind? But no, we try and get every inch of scripture and try and hook it up into every other inch of scripture. And it's almost like we're schizophrenic because the one time we're saying it's not workspace and the next time we're saying it's workspace. No, you've got to rightly define the word. You really have to. Oh, but the thing is, you know, if you get saved, then you go to clubs or you drink alcohol and stuff like that. So you're not going to go in the rapture because only the very good people who repent all the time, every day on their hands and their knees, Severely will go in, will go up into the rapture. Everybody else, all these backslidden Christians, you know, who sin every day, and they're not going to go up in the rapture. Warning: Every Christian sins every day. Okay, so don't think you are going to be getting out of it. Okay, what happens if you sin? The Holy Spirit, as a Christian, the Holy Spirit will make you feel uncomfortable. Right? If you if you want to know whether you're sinning or whether you're not sinning, do you feel uncomfortable doing the thing? If you feel uncomfortable doing the thing, well then just repent and move on. But I can tell you now that even if you are sinning, that's not going to determine whether you're going to go up in the rapture or not. And I'm going to prove it to you. I am going to take you to the book of Galatians. Let me just bring it up. Okay, let's bring it up. Here's the Bible. Right. And this is the book of Galatians to a, a bunch of Christians who kind of thought that um, they needed to maintain their salvation through works. And uh, let me just make my picture here a bit more smaller. Okay, get it out of the way here a bit. Okay, so look what it says here. It says, oh, you foolish Galatians, you foolish Christians, okay? 
Who has bewitched you? Who's put a spell on you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. In other words, just tell me this one thing. Right? Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish after beginning by means of the Spirit that you're now trying to finish by means of the flesh? So, what's been said here, let me just make this bigger again. So, what's been said here is basically you got saved okay by believing uh, to get my picture right here so basically what's being said here is oops what's being said here is you got saved by believing in Jesus Christ okay you got saved by your initial repentance, okay, right in the beginning, when you, and all repent means is that you just turn around from the way you've been going and you follow Christ. If you're following Christ, um, then basically you will want the things that he wants. You will chase after his heart. You won't want to live the life you used to live. You'll want to live the life that Jesus has for you because it's better for you. It's common sense better for you. You know, God wants things that are better for you. Not for his sake, but for your sake, okay? He loves you so much. And if you, if you have repented and you have given your life to Christ, then just relax, Okay, just relax in those green pastures that talks about in Psalms 23, that he will lead you beside the still waters. Okay, he will restore your soul. He will provide for you. He will look after you for you. He will prepare that table for you. You know, the Bible says, I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Okay, God will look after you. Just chill out. And any Christian that says, Oh, yeah, I know you were saved by grace, but, you know, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. You've got to, just reject them. Don't lose your peace. Don't get all upset. Don't get all fearful, okay? The Bible says that you were dead in your sins. So tell me, what can a dead person do? Nothing. They are dead. It's just like the dead people Jesus rose up, you know, from funerals. You know, the, the dead person would go past and Jesus would touch him. He couldn't even raise his finger because he was dead, you know. It's all Jesus. It's all Jesus or it's nothing. It's Jesus or we're going to hell, okay. So just chill out, okay. The Holy Spirit will convict you. Rely on him. And even if you do sin, you're still going in the rapture, okay. Because all your future sins have been covered by the blood of Jesus. So get excited, we're in those last days, the peace treaty's gone out, and we're just waiting for confirmation. I mean, in my spirit, I'm sensing it could happen any time now to the maximum three years' time, absolute maximum. But I'm excited. So thanks for tuning and watching. Thanks, guys.